So we spent a good amount of time capturing not just the structure of the face, but also getting all that lovely blocked internal values across the face. Now I'm really, really happy with the shape and the feel of this. Now what I'm going to do is really refine the key facial elements. Now I want to talk very, very quickly about what bits I'm going to refine. Now, it's very, very tempting to go with a small bit of charcoal or a charcoal pencil and refine everything. Now you can get into problems with that. Number one, it can get very, very messy. If you're rubbing your hand across the whole drawing, you're going to end up smudging a lot of it. But you have to ask yourself, why would you want to go and refine every element of that portrait? Now there's a really good trick that we can do and that involves how our eyes work, how our optics actually see, see the world because our eyes can only focus on one thing at a time and we have this thing obviously called peripheral vision. So by looking at the lens, looking at you at home, everything around is consequently in fuzzy in peripheral vision. So if you're looking at me, the area around your house right now, you won't be able to see as clearly as you can looking at me right now. Now you can use that clever optical illusion to your advantage because if you painted everything in your drawing or drew everything very refined detail, sometimes that's a bit overwhelming and it's quite a lot for that eye to take in. But using that optical uh, way that our eyes work, if you refine the key area where you want the viewer to really look, and then as we work out from that drawing or painting, you get looser and more fuzzy, like peripheral vision, you're going to create something that feels more real and consequently you can draw the audience's eye to the very centre or the very specific part of your drawing. Now with this obviously being the portrait, I really want those eyes, I really want to get that lovely stare and eye to eye contact that my drawing has. So I'm going to really make sure those eyes are really, really crisp and really clear and then as we work out from this drawing we're going to get slightly looser and I'm going to leave some of these lovely broad strokes that we spend a lot of time putting in at the start of the process. Now I'm going to use a range of materials to do this. I am going to use a slightly smaller, skinnier stick of willow charcoal to get a little bit of accuracy and I'm going to be using some charcoal pencils. So I've got a couple of charcoal pencils here. Now I really want to make sure that you're using willow charcoal pencils, not compressed charcoal. They're two very different things. Willow charcoal is still the very light essence of that charred, burnt wood. Whereas a compressed charcoal is all that dust basically brought and stuck together. Now you can't get a light uh, sort of soft quality. And sometimes when you put compressed charcoal on top of a willow charcoal drawing, it actually stands out, it sticks up too much as opposed to blending in. So whatever charcoal pencil you're doing, make sure you're actually just using proper charcoal. You could also just get a normal piece of charcoal, willow charcoal stick and sand it or refine it until you get to a nice point. Because really it's the point that we're after, just to get the precision of getting the details around some of those those facial features. Of course working with a pencil as well you get the benefit of you can hold it like a pencil and of course you're not getting um, your hands dirty by holding all the, uh, the, 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 the length of that willow charcoal so it's a great tool to use. We're still going to be using uh, the eraser as well and towards the end we're going to introduce a little bit of white chalk just to really lift up some of those highlighted qualities. So let's look closely. I'm going to zoom in with the tablet looking at the eyes a little bit more detail and I'm going to focus on these eyes and I'm going to go how we did it at the start focusing on the dark darkest parts first. So just looking at this eye area, the eye region, I'm going to sort of sketch in those darkest points first. Now for me it is obviously the, uh, the, the pupil I can see is the absolute darkest so I'm going to sort of plot that in first and then going on to the outside of the iris. Okay so I'm going to, I am pushing hard but I'm just sort of still got a lot of control. I'm not actually gouging into the paper there. So already just that gives the eye just a real character and it's really really jumping out at me now that it has just a lot more strength. So working out towards that now I'm going to find the shape of the eye around it. Okay so I'm going to sort of place in the eye on the left hand side and I can shade with it. I'm not just drawing lines, I am sort of trying to work in shade by sort of crisscrossing and moving the charcoal pencil around and then coming down to the inside of the eyelid which appears here. I'll sort of go to the uh, his upper eyelid which cuts across, really really checking and then coming down to there and just shading the inside of that eye. Now if at any point you feel that oh you've done a little bit too much that's fine so if I feel like that eyelid is just a little bit too large just take your eraser and just take it back to whatever level that it needs to come back until you really feel that you've got it. I'm just going to take the shape of the eye slightly lower on this side. 
Now ignore the white of the eye, we're going to sort of get into the, the chalk a little bit later. I don't want to focus too much on the chalk. I'm still just focusing on the light and the dark. I'm just going to take away some of that area in the white eye that I don't need anymore, that sort of smudged part there. Just rub that away. And I'm going to look at the area around the eye. So I just want to make sure that are my areas of light and dark around the eye as dark as they need to be. So for example, just above the eyebrow here, it just goes slightly darker. So I'm just using my charcoal pencil, or you could just jump back to your willow charcoal stick just to sort of fill that in, using my finger there just to soften it a little bit. And I'm just, I'm just sort of literally dragging the uh, charcoal back and forth just to get that tone. I'm fairly happy with that. Just take the shadow just over just a little bit there. Okay, so I'm going to go from that eye and I'm then going to creep now over to the right hand side eye and I want to make sure that that's now placed in. And again, you need to double check, double check again, is that in the right place? Do I need to move it about a little bit? Does it need to creep over to the left? Does it need to creep over to the right? Do I need to make it slightly higher or slightly lower? So just spend some time just checking. Is it in the right place? I think my eyelid just, the inside of the eye just needs to come over by about a millimetre or so. Just to the right. We have to be that picky at this stage because a millimetre really does make all the difference. And it'd be a shame to be lazy at this point where I spent so much time getting it right and putting all this effort in that I just didn't move something just a fraction higher just because I wanted to speed ahead with the process. So I'm going to just make, lift it up by a fraction and bring it in there. So the start of the eye is there and then I know that the eye line comes down here. So the beginning of the iris creeps around there. So my pupil is pretty much there. Just step back and get a feel for that. that. That's fine. So then I know the outside of the eye finishes here. So I'm just going to tidy up with my eraser just the outside there. So we know that's fine. So I can see that this shape here, it's creeping a little bit too far to the right. So as I go and draw the rest of the eye, I can correct that. Back to my charcoal pencil and back to sort of drawing up around the eye. I'm not pushing hard at all yet, I'm still just making sure things are placed in the right place by working at it nice and lightly. And then going around this way. I want to make sure that I don't do this eye as big, because I feel it's getting a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to make sure I just take it down a little bit in size. Obviously you need to make sure those eyes are the same size. So it just comes in just a fraction. Just move the uh, pupil across just a little bit. Now again, because I was working fairly lightly, I'm able to do that. Whereas if I press too hard, I wouldn't have been able to have adjusted that. So I'm going to bring the eye down to there, and it roughly finishes there. So I've got the eyelashes coming across there. That's fairly good. I'm just going to take it up a fraction here, where the upper eyelid is. This is dark in the outer ring of the iris. You'll notice that all irises have a dark ring around the edge, so make sure you can kind of reflect that and draw that in as you see. Regardless of eye colour, it should always have a nice dark line around it. I'm going across, across there. Now this is the most, this is the pickiest point that I am in the whole of the drawing process. This is the bit where I really do scrutinise what I'm doing and I am really, really critical about every mark that I lay down because I need to get these eyes right. I want them to be the most important part of my picture so they are deserved of my attention and critique to get them as good as I possibly can. I don't want to scrimp on producing a good painting, but the eyes just could have been just a little bit better. Okay, so let's look at that area now under the eye here. Look at the structure around the eye. 
quite often people neglect the supporting areas around a facial feature and they are just as important and in some cases even more important than the facial feature itself. So for example the area around this eye is as important as the eye itself because without drawing and structuring the eyebrow and the area under the eye you'll just have a, an unusual eye that's just floating. So quite often if you find yourself going in circles and going around in circles and finding that you're rendering a facial feature is just getting problematic, stop for a minute and then just look at the area around that facial feature. So for example, if you're really struggling with getting your nose right, just take a pause and look at the area around the nose, look at the cheeks, look at the filter and the upper lip and look at the ridge and around the eyes that nose and you might find those are the problems and that's the area that's the problem and not the facial feature itself. It's because the supporting area is letting down that one feature you spent a lot of time on. So really look at the areas around those facial features because they have to be as strong as that facial feature itself. Let's clean up the inside of that eye which is pure highlight and I'm just using my small willow charcoal stick for this because I want the softness and I want that consistency of the willow marking making that I've got across the face. Just a little more suggestion there for that eye up there. Now I can see that I'm going to have to creep this uh, top part of the face over uh, just a fraction, the outline of his head, which is roughly here. I'm sort of going up there, so I think that's where the outside of his head is. So I'm fairly happy with those eyes, I'm fairly pleased. I'm going to put a little bit of charcoal in, uh, sorry, a little bit of white chalk just to pick out some of the, um, the, uh, the highlights on them in a moment. But before I do that, I want to just creep down to uh, some of the other the stronger face features. So I want to make sure that the nose is just as strong. So I'm like I did the eyes, I'm going to work on it, but I'm not going to be as tight and controlled as I was with those eyes. Because remember, I don't want to make everything detailed. As I work away from the eyes, I want to get slightly looser and not quite as refined. So I'm just going to spend some time structuring the nose, just make sure that it is the right shape and the right format. And again, I'm just looking at the darker shadows first. So here's the shadow just around that nostril, which again is quite dark. Don't want to press too hard. And again, that inside nostril again, which is an incredibly dark part. And make sure that I shade all the areas. So this top part of that nostril is quite rounded. So by shading on that left hand side, you can create that three dimensional feel of that nose coming around. And then that bit is a little bit more in the mid-tone and then sort of take the shadow over to that right hand part. The nostril comes over just a little bit further. That's fine. And then this shadow under here, just we're going to take that down, just take that down a tone. And then that leads up under the nostril, that tone there. And then I know that I can then move it down. And that will then eventually take me down to where the mouth is. Just soften that bit of uh, tone there. Don't want it too strong. We don't want it too um too distracting from the main uh, the main features. So I'm just now going to just work my way to the uh, right hand side of the nostril. So the bottom part of the nose is slightly shadowed, and then I can see that the nostril on the right hand side is slightly higher than the nostril on the left hand side, and it's just slightly darkened, which is sort of roughly there. I think that's about right. Just adjust the shape just a little bit there. And I don't really need to draw the line on the nose on the right hand side. You don't need to sort of strong line. There's a suggestion of a line there already. And again, if you end up drawing too many lines across the face, you'll actually kill that optical illusion of three dimension. The more linear the go you go, the more lines you put on the face, the flatter the face will appear. Okay, so try and avoid, particularly at this stage, by drawing lots of lines. Keep it tonal, keep it nice and sketchy and nice and light, and that will help enhance that three-dimensional feel. We don't want lines because lines will make everything flat. So let's just now go from under that nose, which is his top lip, go into his filter, and there's a slight, ever so slight suggestion of the shadow in the filter there. Just using my rubber now just to clean up a couple of those initial lines that we placed at the start there because I don't want them to be distracting. And then consequently that takes us all the way down then to our lip. So we're going to sort of roughly get that in. Again, not as focused as we have been with the eyes and not as focused as we have been with the nose, but I just need to strengthen the dark of it. So again, I'm using my charcoal pencil because I can get the dark there. Remember the top lip is the, uh, is, is the bit that's most in dark. 
because the top lip, because the light's coming down and our top lip is cast away from the shadow. So we need to make sure that that lovely top lip is the one in shadow. And of course the lines that's created by when our two lips come together. Slightly up there. And then we've got the lovely little crease up on the right hand side that has a little bit of shed. So I'm just going to go back to my charcoal willow stick and just give that little bit of an area a little bit darker perhaps. And then with the pencil just pick up the inside there. So then we're just checking out the bottom lip and I think the bottom it roughly finishes there. I'm going to leave that lovely highlight bit there because his top, uh, sorry, the top of his bottom lip is in, high, is in highlight. It's reflecting a little bit of the, um, the white. Let's go back onto this side. That's fantastic. And then the shadow up under those lips, which is there. So now let's just look at that, look at the supporting area, as I already talked about, the area around that mouth. So I need to bring the tone across here a little bit more. Around there, then it gets a little bit lighter because of the curve of his mouth that his cheeks created. It's slightly darker behind that, so I'm just going to shade that slightly darker and just drag the, uh, the mark making over there. And I'm just going to bring the shadow just under his mouth, which is the top part of his chin or the jaw, and that just comes up slightly higher. And again, I just push the charcoal a little bit harder just to sort of shade that in. And I'm actually going to jump up to my willow charcoal stick now, the small willow charcoal stick, just to enhance that a little bit more. Again, it gets even darker when we get to the bottom part of his chin. I'm just using my finger there just to slightly soften that and blend that in together. Okay, so I've got a nice sort of strong piercing feel now, which is what I wanted to create. Remember at the very, very start where I said you have to establish that goal, you have to sort of start evaluating, have you got to that goal, okay? So I feel like I'm getting that, I'm getting the strength there, and I just feel like I'm losing uh, just a, a, some clarity around the rest of the, of the portrait. Now I'm not going to use my charcoal pencils as much to kind of make it crisp. I'm going to put my charcoal pencils down, I'm just going to use my willow charcoal, both the skinny one and the medium sized one, and I'm just going to bring just a little bit of strength and clarity now, just to some of the other parts of the face. So for example, the ear on the left hand side, I feel it's just disappearing just a little bit. So just by really pushing down hard and just using my finger just to pick up a couple of highlights, I'm just going to just bring it back to attention. Of course, I don't want it to stand out, but I just want to just make sure that I'm not losing losing the definition there. I'm just going to push down the charcoal. And you could be a little bit more exciting with this and you could be a bit more dynamic with your mark making. Because remember, you spent the time making those eyes nice and precise, so you can just have a bit of fun and just sort of make a little bit of exciting, expressive mark making. Going up to the hair, I'm going to just refine just some of these darker parts just up there. And just slightly darken it on that side of the hair. And you can even use your rubber and just do the same sort of thing. You can kind of cut into it and... Uh, make some good interesting marks. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. Now it's not quite over yet. There's one more thing that I'm going to put on the drawing just, I think, just to lift it up and that's going to be some chalk. So I'm going to take a little break now and if you come back in a second, if you come and see how I've used the white chalk and that will really transform it for something that is sort of three-dimensional and suddenly create that three-dimensional feel and an almost like life appearance. <laughs> 